One of the things that I'm amazed at when I hear it from believers, uh, how great their faith is and how much they really trust and believe the Lord. Even to the point where it seems that they are being very pompous about their faith in the Lord. You know, you, you, they are going through something in their lives and, and you, you might say to them, have faith in God. And they'll say, oh, I've got all the faith in the world. Uh, I, I really believe God. That, that, that's not where my problem is. <laughs> and usually that's where their problem lies. The fact that they don't truly understand their lack of faith in God. Even by simply saying that they really honestly believe. Just because you say you believe, just because you believe that you believe, does not mean that you really honestly believe. Amen? So dearly beloved, not, never let us get pompous about you know, our belief, how much we so-called believe. I never forget the, uh, the young rich ruler who uh, asked the Lord to come to his place uh, or the centurion who asked the Lord to come to his place and and he said uh, I'm not even sure it was a centurion but he said Lord help my unbelief and Jesus said to him all things are possible to God and so dearly beloved we have to understand that that all things are possible unto our God and yes we need to ask him to help our unbelief. Uh, look what the word of God says in John the 11th chapter in the 11th verse. These things said he, Jesus said, and after that he said unto them, to the disciples, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. This is Jesus' perception of what had transpired in Lazarus' life. Even though he knew Lazarus was dead. But his perception is that he was asleep. Amen? Then he said to his disciples, Oh, then his disciples said unto him, Lord, if he sleeps, then he will do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Jesus was sharing with them this fight. I am thankful to the Father that he or I was not there at Lazarus' side when he died. Because this is going to be used for the glory of God and of the glorification of of the Son and his relationship with the Father. See, they did not fully realize the true relationship that Jesus had with the Father. They know of Jesus because they could see him. And they realized that the things that he was doing, the miracles and all, was through the Father. They realized that, but, but they were looking so much upon Jesus himself. And Jesus was ultimately trying to get them to see the Father. You see, and that's what Jesus does in our lives, or the Spirit does in our lives. It honestly wants us to recognize who Jesus is, what he's done. But at the same time, Jesus constantly is pointing to the Father. The Spirit of God is constantly pointing to the Father. When a person say that they are a Christian and they are walking in themselves and they're not honoring the Father, then no matter what they say about being a Christian, 
I know for a fact that they're not a Christian because the Spirit of God will glorify the Father. The Spirit of God will honor the Father. And this is what Jesus was doing and saying. I know you have watched the miracles I have done. I know you have watched me walk on water. You have seen all these things. And now your eyes are set on me as a miracle worker. But what I want you to know and what I want you to see is because of the Father that I am able and capable of doing these things. And that's why Jesus Christ said, it is needful that I go away. Because if I don't go away, then the spirit of truth will not come unto you. And Jesus could see that their faith was in him and on him. In other words, if Jesus wasn't around, then there would be no miracles. That's the way they looked at it. But Jesus wanted them to know. The miracles are happening because of my trust in the Father. Not because of who I am, the Son of God, but because my trust and belief in the Father working through me. So in turn, I want you to get that same kind of understanding. So that way, you can trust the Father who sits in heaven. Beloved, this is what Jesus is consistently parting toward. And he knew the only way their faith would grow if they would finally see that only God can raise the dead. Jesus was basically saying, I can't raise the dead. I am the resurrection. The Father is using me to raise the dead. I am the resurrection. I am the life. But the Father is using me. And without the Father, I would not be able to do this. Glory be to God. Beloved, he was trying to separate where they could understand that because he knew that one day he would not be with them in the flesh. And they would have to trust the Father in every step that they make. They would have to trust the Holy Spirit now that is living on the inside of them after the day of Pentecost. And that's what we have to do. We have to be willing to trust God, to trust our Father. Even though we cannot see Him, we cannot touch Him, we have to believe. They could touch Jesus. They could <clears throat> eat with Jesus. They were part of Jesus' community. But Jesus was trying to get them ready for the day that He would not be with them. And beloved, he told them, Lazarus is already dead. And what he says, he says, And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you might believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Let us go to him now. But I know that he is dead. I know that they have already put him in the grave. But I want you to see it. You have not seen this before. You have seen sick ones uh, are raised up. But I want you to see that I am not only capable of healing sickness, but raising the dead. And I only can do it because the Father is working through me. Glory be to the living God. And dearly beloved, that's why the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So that we can allow the Holy Spirit to uh, uh, use us in a very powerful way. And beloved, as the days grow even darker, the Spirit of God that is in us will become more of a light unto the world. Many will choose to walk away from that light. But many will be drawn to that light like moths surrounding a light bulb at night. They will surround, they will desire to know what this light is all about. So beloved, know this, that all is done for our growth in the Lord. And no matter if it seems like he is not caring 
or he's not there on time according to our timetable but beloved he is always on time amen so beloved in the name of Jesus Christ walk in that and know that your God has not left you is not forsaken you but everything that is done is that your faith might grow toward the Father. Amen. Beloved, be blessed in Jesus' name.